Evening. Hey everybody, how y'all doing today? Uh, we gonna definitely do a detour today. I said I was gonna talk about men and broken hearted and I'm gonna stay there because I'm still gonna deal with the men but I also was gonna hit up on wisdom tonight. So we gonna start a little, uh, I got a second venue to, uh, to broadcast from. So tonight I'm gonna stay right here where we was talking about the men and the broken heart. And I want you to understand something. And that is the book of Proverbs, the instructions uh, for wisdom. It has a lot to do with how we keep our hearts. Uh, when I left off, it, it was uh, a father's instruction to his son. And so uh, I want to I want to stay there for a minute because a lot of this has to do with why our uh, hearts are broken, because we have not stayed on the paths of righteousness. So uh, we didn't understand how precious wisdom is. OK, so because in the beginning, it tells you if you uh the beginning of knowledge or wisdom is to know that, you know, I'm paraphrasing, know that God is God. You got to you got to know that he is, first of all, and then go from there. But let us let us go in into prayer and then we're going to keep it moving from there. Hey, uh, here we go. Hey, Melissa. Uh, who else out there? I know I saw somebody else. But anyway, hey, everybody. Uh, Linda, how we going doing? All right, let's go ahead and pray. Father, I just thank you right now for who you are in our lives. I thank you for what you're doing, oh God, in the kingdom in this season. Father, I pray right now for your wisdom, God. Father, I pray right now that you, you those who lack wisdom, those of us who lack wisdom, Father, you said let us ask, oh God, and you will pour out uh, generously, Father. And I just thank you for pouring out your wisdom on us today. I thank you right now, Father, that that you have us in a place for such a time as this, Father, that our hearts are open, Father, that our eyes are open to see your truth, oh God. Father, you 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 took away all of the the uh the church, the pump and the circumstance, and you caused us to lean upon you personally, God. You called us to seek your face personally, God. Father, for you want a personal individual relationship with each one of us. It's not based on how the choir sings. It's not based on how many people in the church, but it's based on our heart position with you, God. Father, let our hearts scream loudly unto thee in this hour, God. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Forgive us of our the sin we've committed uh, knowingly and unknowingly, oh God. Blot out our iniquities, God. Let the blood of Jesus sever the generational curses, oh God, that plague us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And as we come out of this captivity, God, I just want to thank you, Father, that your word is true, Father, that nothing is Nothing is uh, 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 nothing is outside of you, your word, God. And Father, even as it manifests in our lives, God, I thank you and I bless you for it all. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I'm going to hit a little side note right here. Remember, I was telling you that we're in a season where we're coming out of captivity, correct? We're coming out of captivity. And just like the children of Israel came out of captivity, uh, 400 years after being in captivity and 400 years in Egypt, when they came out of captivity, the children of Israel, the children of Israel received gold and silver from the inhabitants of Egypt. Hmm. Yes, yes, they did. So what am I saying? I say, look at this right now. We are receiving. What are we receiving? We're receiving gold, <laughs> gold and tree. No, we're receiving stimulus checks. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're re stimulus, receiving stimulus checks online. We're receiving uh, stimulus uh, payments. And because we're receiving them, we're receiving them in a way that, uh, it, you know, like we've never gotten from a government system before. So, again, as we come out of captivity, we find ourselves receiving from the nation that held us captivity, even though they're giving their own people stuff, the people that are here. To, but I'm telling you, pay attention to this. And while this is going on, we should be encouraging people to not only, I mean, you getting X amount of dollars for each child, at least, 
invest in their future. Just go buy some stock in their name. Don't spend it all at the Gucci store. Yes, I said that because uh, yes, last week when it hit, you went up into the mall down here at the Galleria. It was a line of us lined up for the Gucci store. Why, why are we doing that? Why are we spending our money in places? Anyway, uh, the, the $500 you just wasted on a Gucci bag or a belt or whatever you bought, it could have been a long-term investment into your child. There's some stocks out there. Even if you just spent half of it on an Amazon stock and just held on to it till your kid got ready to go to the college, that would have been really good investment. But, you know, a fool and his money is soon, soon parted. So, hey, again, we have to use wisdom in this season, wisdom to get us to the place where we should be, and especially in Christ, okay? And so, uh, with that being said, I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about, um, I was supposed to be in another group, and I'm going to try to join that meeting if I can. Uh, so if y'all just bear with me, I'm going to try to join them, but I got to figure out what the what the meeting ID is. So, hey, hey, how y'all doing? Let me let me see if I can flip over right quick. Uh, let me see if I, I can't get there that way. Uh, you still there? Okay, good. You know what? I'll join them later. But anyway, I'll, I'll catch up with them later. Uh, so here we go. Let's deal with what we came to deal with. Uh, let's talk about this, uh, the men in the hearts. Go with me to Proverbs chapter th chapter four. Proverbs chapter four, it talks about hearing and yielding to instruction. Now, I know he's talking about men, but he, he really, he says children. So it's talking about both of us. He's talking about everybody that's in the family, okay? It says here in chapter four, it says, Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding, for I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. We have to understand that God did not put us here and stop us from doing things to keep us away from having fun. <clears throat> All right? <clears throat> he established some things so that we would not be in a place where it will open the door for the enemy to come in and attack us, okay? You have to understand, just like most of us are parents at one at a time, or, or grandparents, we have boundaries for the safety of our children. We raised them. We did not let them go down and play in the swamp where the alligators were, okay? Because guess what? Even though that there was some water down there, there was also danger down there. So it wasn't like we was keeping them away from having fun, but we was protecting them from the dangers that was lurking in the water. Oh, y'all got to watch out there. Now, nah, I, didn't, I didn't hit something right there. God's boundaries, his boundaries keeps us from the dangers that are unseen to us. OK, so he know they there. He's trying to keep us from getting into a place where we will be in uh, in a world of trouble, okay? So he's telling his son, listen, pay, pay attention to the, my instruction and uh, uh, attend to no understanding. He said, for I gave you good doctrine, forsake not my law, for I was my father's son. So this is something that was passed down to generation to generation, but it is lost in our generation. It is lost because we come from a place of captivity. Okay, it says, guess what? Not only did we come from a, let me stop right there. Uh, not only did we come from a place of captivity, after we come out of captivity, we walked into a land of sabotage and traps that were set for men, okay? Amen. It was, it was all of this, all of these things were happening that was, uh, that was happening was designed to remove men from their homes so that they would not be able to pass down knowledge, wisdom to their sons, but they allowed that to happen so that it would be passed down in the streets. Okay, let me just keep going from there. It says, for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. 
So God's commandments that he give us are the borders that keep us in a place where we can live, okay? He wants, God wants us to live. He wants us to live and live freely. He's not going to keep a good thing from us. The only thing he keeps from us is danger, but we have to operate within the boundaries of his love, the boundary of his commandments. Amen. It says, verse five, get wisdom, get understanding and for, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Don't walk away from what I'm telling you because it's important. He said, fools hate instruction. Fools hate knowledge. So if you're in that place, and I, when I read that, I was like, whoa, that's, that's got to be a lot of, you know how many people in church that won't go to Bible study? I'm just going to leave that right there. <laughs> if you're not learning instruction, if you're not receiving instructions, then he said, he said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if we in church, how come we haven't taken it upon ourselves to learn of Christ? How come we have not taken it upon ourselves to get into the fire, to get into the knowledge of who he is and to learn of him? We cannot retain his commandments. We cannot keep his, his uh, statutes. If we don't know what they are. So we just, if you despise instruction, you're, you're headed for danger. He said, forsake, he said, decline, uh, is, it, neither decline from the words of my mouth, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Who shall preserve thee? Wisdom and understanding shall preserve. It says, love her and she shall keep thee. Who are we to love? We're to love wisdom. We're to love knowledge. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. We have to learn to dwell with one another with understanding. Now, guess what? If I'm keeping God's commandments and I'm not, I'm not, I'm walking within the boundaries of his love, then I am keeping myself from the danger and the perils of evil. Okay? Okay. That's the whole key. Once you dwell in the evil, you give, you give the enemy, you give evil a legal right to jack you up, okay? You cannot open that door and expect not to have some consequences, okay? It says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and get understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost what? When you embrace her, when you embrace wisdom, when you embrace the knowledge of God, when you embrace his commandments, when you embrace his statutes, you are now <coughs> getting to a place, not only do you have understanding, but you're walking in a place of blessings. He says, she shall give thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory, shall she deliver to thee. So here we go. Verse 10, hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Uh-oh, uh-oh, what is he saying right there? Hear my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. What have I been saying the whole time? God's law, his love, his commandments protects us from the evil that comes when we, from, from things that come when we step outside of his boundaries. When we open the gateway for evil, when we start to sin and do evil, now you have just given the enemies of God a legal right to jack you up. God works under legalities. He, he, look, he created the heavens and earth. But his rule was he would you he would work through us when he gave it to us. He said, I will work through them to do it. But God also has another rule that he cannot be around sin. He won't be around it. Not at all. So we have to watch the way we walk, the way we talk, how we step into how we step into our uh, our life with him by covering ourselves, okay? He said, receive my sayings and the years of thy life shall be many. So guess what? If I'm not paying attention to the commandments of God, I am destined. I'm cutting my days short. I'm cutting my days short. Why would you want to cut your days short? We already got enough trouble in this world. We got, 
<laughs> if you look like me, they've been trying to kill you since Moses was born. Okay, let me just make, make it plain. How plain is that? They've been trying to kill us since Moses. So guess what? That ain't changed. But the only protection that we have is God. And why do we want him out of our way also? God is the only thing keeping us alive today. Because if it wasn't for him, the, the evil one would have his way, okay? And he ate those that love God. He said, verse 11, I have taught thee thy way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction and let her not go. Keep her for she is thy life. If you don't understand the commandments and statutes, you are walking down a thin path, a very thin path. You're walking down a path of destruction. You're walking down a... Uh, it, it, the only reason you still here is grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. And that's why it is so important for us as parents, as grandparents, to pray for our children because prayers, what? Prayers are perpetual. They God will answer a prayer you pray today 400 years from now. If it's, if it's for your children, it's for your bloodline. God keep my children. Your word said it, my seed shall not fall to the ground. You said it will not come off the vine before it's time. God, you got to pray these prayers to cover your children just, just as Job said, just in case they sinned against you. You know, when you pray prayers for your children and your grandchildren, the ones that still in diapers, they are covered all the way until they get up. You, you got to cover them. Amen. You cover them in righteousness. And even after you long gone from here, God is still answering prayers. He's answering the prayers of the saints. He will answer them prayers as long as it's according to his word. It's as long as it's according to his covenant. I'm telling you, God is not a covenant breaker. He is a covenant keeper. And he keep covenant from generation to generation. Y'all don't understand here. I didn't got happy up in here. God has kept us from generation to generation because of the covenant he's had with our forefathers. Amen. Amen. He, he's keeping the covenant. So as long as we're willing to pray for our children, as long as we're willing to pay, pray for righteousness, for as long as you pray for the blood to cover them all the days of their life, long he will answer those prayers. Amen. Amen. And then you can be in that cloud of witnesses like we know our people are up there cheering us on right about now. They holding on to it. They holding on. I thank my grandmother and my grandfather and all those who have prayed for us this day that we are still here. I thank them for the prayers, that, or should I say the wood that they done threw on the fire, the kindling that they done put in to keep the fire going huh? while they were still here. They did the work while it was day. Because huh? oh, when night come, no man can work. Ah! Let me. Yes, Lord. We have to understand that the boundaries of God's love is not there to keep us away from good things. It's there to keep us alive and well, okay? So we have to understand that. We have to understand that, guess what? He said, take fast hold, fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her for she is thy life. Now here's the kicker. If you enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men, it says, you got to stay away from that. But if you don't understand, let me, let me bring it back to today. When I grew up, when I grew up, my generation, which is the last of the baby boomers, we, 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 our instruction we found on the street corner. Our instruction that we found on the street corner taught us to do what? Evil. Evil. It, it, that's, that's what it was. Let's just flat out tell it like it is. We weren't taught how to cherish a woman or how to how to keep her happy. We was taught how to hit it and quit it. Let's just make it plain. That is the way of evil and it, it's got to stop and it's got to change. It's, it's, it's so it's so ridiculous now that guess what? We're in a generation where where men are still older than I am and they are still playing that game. When when, when did the you, you have not heeded instruction and the only reason
reason that you're probably still here is because somebody prayed that for your salvation before while you were still a baby. Because mm -hmm. God going to answer that prayer whether you want to or not. He's going to answer it. So here we go. He says, avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief and their, eve, their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Now check this out. I want you to really listen to this. He said, avoid it, verse 15 and 16 in Proverbs 4. When you avoid evil, when people get in, I, I want to bring up a television show here in a second. When you avoid evil, you have now avoided the paths that have will cause you to lose sleepless nights. These people, when people commit evil, even if, 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 you, if you watched any of those documentaries on crack, they do not rest until they do crack again. You see them walk in the streets at 1030. You see them still pacing at 230 in the morning because until they do evil again, they cannot rest. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there. They cannot rest. It's the same thing with the murderer. You remember, you know, watch the show in first 48. Half of the criminals that they arrest. They are uptight. They move and they move. But as soon as they confess that sin, then there is like a sigh of relief come over them because the blood, the same blood that Abel's blood that cries out from the ground, that from the sin that his brother Cain had slain him is the same thing happening today. You cannot go kill somebody and think you're going to lay down and go to bed. I'm sorry. It ain't happening. It's going to bother you. It's going to take your sleep because the blood is still crying out for justice. Okay. So what we, what we don't want to do is go down the path of evil men. Why? Because God is trying to keep you in the, in safety. He's trying to save your life. He's trying to keep you from the drama that you're going to get from baby mama number one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven. He's trying to save you from the craziness. Amen. But if we only would heed instruction, okay? And that goes, that goes both ways. But I'm talking about, I'm still talking about how men, we have a lot of men out here that are broken and they're broken because we received the wrong instruction and there was no instruction except street instruction. And what the sad part is, people did that on purpose. The government did that on purpose so that we would receive this street instruction. Even now they're putting this craziness on TV, uh, all this to, to change the minds of our people so that they can do things that will wind them up in their prisons. Okay, let me get back to the word here. First, verse seven, verse uh, 17, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence, but the path of the just is a as shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. You have to be just. You have to be upright. You have to remember his commandments and statutes and run from evil. It says, the 19, the, the way of the wicked is as darkness and they know not at what they stumble. You walk in the dark. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. Uh, uh, this is testimony time now. My uh, first wife, uh, when I was married, and I used to go to the club. You know, I'd go to club Friday night right after work, and I'd just be at the club and be in there until the club like, closed some nights. But anyway, when I would come home, she would rearrange the furniture in the house, the cocktail table be the move, and you coming in at 2 o'clock in the morning, and it's dark, you know, with a little tipsy, and, you know, boom, that cocktail table didn't move. I didn't hit myself in the ankle. <laughs> She was funny like that, but you know what? God bless her. She was a, it used to trip me out. So I had to make sure when I came home, I don't care. I had to turn the lights on because she moved the stuff around. Me. <laughs> he, he, he said they stumbled in the dark, okay? Yeah, Bert, I'm talking about you. They stumbled in the dark, okay? It's like you don't know which way you're going. Anyway, he said, he said my son, a 10 Unto my words, incline thy ear unto my sin. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life. The words of wisdom are life unto those that find them in health unto all their flesh. When you keep God's word, he will keep you, okay? 
It's, it's, and I'm talking to everybody. You have to guard yourself. Let me see what it is. He said, keep thy heart. I'm going to stop right there. You have to keep your heart. You can't keep giving your heart to people. You have to keep your heart. Why? With all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. What issues? We got depression. We got oppression. We got uh, all types of mental illness. All of that comes because you trusted somebody with your heart before you trusted God with it. Trust God, God with your heart by keeping your keeping his commandments and his statutes and stay within the boundaries of his love so that your issues will be godly issues and not the issues of this world. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. So you're not here to take up what this world is offering to give to you. They will give you some stuff that will make you lose your mind. Amen. A broken heart will kill you. Yes, it will. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. It's out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Your ways will be established when you follow God. Okay? It says turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Do not remove, remove thy feet from evil. Remove thy foot from evil. What am I saying? If you're doing some wrong things, I'm just telling you right off the top. It's time to repent. Get back over the fence into the bonds of safety. So why? So that you can have life. You can have it more abundantly. You can heal. Okay. You find rest. Okay. You find rest. And I'm going to say something else. Uh, you uh, it, <laughs> Look, God tells us to keep us for ourselves for a reason. If we've been in relationship for a long period of time, we, we, what are we made from? We're made from the earth, okay? If we're made from the earth, just like the earth has the rest on the Sabbath year, you need some rest too. Amen. You need some rest. Take some time. Learn about you. God, How? why you made me this way? You, tell him who, what, why broke your heart. Admit what you did in the process of your heart being broken and allow God to heal you. He will heal your heart. He will place you back in that garden. Your flower will no longer be wilted, but it will come up and be just a beautiful and shining at the sun of God shining on you. You will have a glow that no one else has and they won't understand it because, wait a minute, why is this beauty here standing out above all the rest? <laughs> Maybe it's because she soaked in oils for a year and smelled like the the what's that queen name Esther <laughs> Esther walk not Esther you know what when I get there I want to smell Esther that's who I want to smell because if she smoked in oils frankincense and myrrh for a year every time she walked through the room she had to smell it up not only did the queen the, the smell got not only was she fine she was smelling good man that's ooh. I'm just saying, here we go. But God bless you. I'm telling you, it's time for us to repent for the things we've done, acknowledge our sin, and allow God to be a blessing in our life. He, he wants to bless you. God put us here. He brought us, the children of Israel, out of Egypt through the desert so that he can show other nations how well he treats his people. Let God treat you well. Partner with him and let him be a blessing to you. You know, when you get two blessed people together, man, God just starts showing boom, 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 boom. They just start boom. You'll be like, what? Look at, you know, and the whole thing is when they bless, they humble. <laughs> oh, that's, you know, it's God. You got to do this. Let God show his goodness through you. God wants to show how good he is to other people through you. Why won't you partner with him? Amen. Father, I just thank you right now for this time. I pray right now, Father, that your children, Lord, I pray for a spirit of repentance, God. Father, I pray that you begin to touch the lives of your men, God. Father, the men, the men, the men. Father, you said you would cause the hearts of the father to return to the sons. Cause those hearts, Father. We speak that and declare it and decree it right now. 
that it is happening all over this nation. It's happening within our communities, God, that the men are returning to their sons, their children, God. They're teaching them the ways in which they know about you, God. Father, begin to open the eyes of their understanding. Even as they pick up a book, oh God, your Bible, any type of knowledge and instruction, God. Father, we know the Holy Spirit is with us. He's with us, been with us the whole time. So Father, let him illuminate the the keys and the messages that we should have, oh God. Father, you said we are to lead our households, oh God. We are to provide, we are to protect. But Father, we can't do that until our obedience is fulfilled in you. So Father, teach us to be obedient to thy word, to thy commandments, that we may learn your statutes, oh God, and uphold them rightly in the city, in the in this corner, in the town square, God. Father, that they will know that we belong to you and you have blessed your children. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you tonight. I thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing being with you again on this coming Saturday at 1130 a.m. Central Standard Time. If you have not been giving to your ministries, find a place to give to. You know, these ministries don't need your, your uh the ministries don't need your money. You need God to have your blessings, okay? Anytime you went to go see God, you should bring an offering to him. It, it don't matter how much it is. New Testament says it, you know, guess what? New Testament tell you, guess what? Uh, you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. So guess what? It don't matter what you bring, but bring God something. Bring God an offering. Amen. They had an offering for everything in the Old Testament. They had an offering for sin. They had an offering for blessing. They had an offering for everything. That did not go away. If you want to repent from some sin, find out what the sin offering was and give that to God also. Amen. (laughs) Let your gift be recognized and tangible so that heaven may see and respond accordingly. God bless you. I'm Pastor Henry. I love you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. God bless you. Y'all have a great night. Amen. Hey, cuz, I see you. All right. Bye. All right. Oh, oh, I, man. How do you sow it in the ministry? Oh, good. Good. I, in here, I got a cash app. Dollar sign K A M I N I S T R Y. K A Ministry. K A M K A Ministry. That's it. Dollar sign. Kingdom A, it's K-A ministry, that's all, and that's it, the whole word. It's not plural, it's singular. It should come, then the church logo should come up, okay? All right, or you can send it to me, which is L-Z-O, L-Z-O Henry, or dollar sign L-Z-O Henry, that way too, and it'll still get in there. But uh, that's the way we go. All right, God bless you, and uh, I'll see you again on Saturday morning at 1130 Central Standard Time. Bye-bye. I'll put it down in the notes too. All right, bye-bye.